Everybody, what's going on? Welcome back for another video. I'm going to go over some weapons here that I would recommend for the current event that's going on right now, which is the Secret Sweetheart. So if you haven't fought this boss you right now, you probably have, um, but you've probably just autoed your way through it, but it is going to get a little harder and there's going to be more rewards. And if you're not pulling on the UV banner right now that's going on or you can't or you're not very strong, uh, I'm going to go over some weapons here that I would recommend either bringing with you or putting on characters that you aren't bringing with you as substitute weapons because they'll be very, very useful. So just so you can give it a an idea here, uh, the Sweet House, the main thing you're going to want to bring in is physical attackers and then also uh, characters that have wind abilities, right? So, or, or just wind, mat wind materia. So you want like arrow, aero aurora, blow. Um, specifically, um, you really don't want to bring magic to this. It's just not as recommended because of that chocolate bar. You want to get that bar down as fast as possible. And as we've already started to see, it's harder to get that bar down the farther, the, the more difficult the fight is. So I'm going to go over some weapons here that I'd recommend you guys uh, use or, or kind of take a look at. Uh, because these might be weapons that even for me myself, I really don't use them for the most part. And so I'm like, boy, this this would be useful in this scenario, right? So, so I'm finding ways to use these weapons where I otherwise wouldn't. So the first one, uh, if you don't already have it, is Apocalypse. So Apocalypse is a solid option here. It's really good for anything physical, but not even just that. But it's got the wind potency. So it's one of Cloud's weapons. It has wind potency. You can put it wherever you want to put it realistically. Um, this would be a good sub weapon. You can even put it in your main hand, depending on how good it is on Cloud and compared to what you ha what else you have. So, say if you have like Masamune, uh, but you don't have like a really good Zidane sword, but this is like OB6 or even like an OB3 or 4, this wouldn't be bad because you're going to have a pretty solid wind potency and having that up front is going to be really good. That it gets the attack boost. It's not physical attack, but it's still solid. So, but they win the wind potency here is where it's going to really make a difference uh, if you're using. Um, like, like, uh, like I was saying, a, a row, uh, arrow, a row, row, blow. It's a hard word to say. <laughs> a little bit of a tongue twister. Because this will put you straight up at, uh, at level three. If you can get one more win potency on him anywhere, just one point, uh, you'll, at OB6, uh, this will put him at, uh, 40%. So that's really, really nice. So, Apocalypse is a big one I'd highly recommend. This one probably doesn't need any introduction. I'm sure most of you guys might already be using this one. <laughs> But it's Motor Drive. Motor Drive is a fantastic weapon for this scenario as well. It's got big, big physical attack boost here. But not only that, it's a single target wind weapon. Um, it's not as it's not quite as heavy hitting as say Dark Heavens or the new Yuffie banner. But what it what those lack in comparison to this one is this one does have a higher natural boost physical attack that the others don't get, get as high in. So that is a nice uh, a nice advantage right there. So this way it frees up your materia slots as well. For just focusing on pure physical attack, just put all your stat stick materials in there and just go ham, right? Because this will be your main damage dealer. And this weapon also pairs extremely well if you have the Armoron Claws. Um, well, actually, I don't have them on this account, on my other one I do, but uh, it, it pairs really well with it because you can do the damage with the Tifa's Armoron Claws. You hit him with that, get that, get that boost, and then start wailing on him with the motor drive. So I would highly recommend this one, Motor Drive, if you have it. Even at OB1, it's a fantastic use for this just because of that uh, that wind damage there. So next up is Zack's weapon. Now this one, I really don't I don't recommend keeping it in a main slot, at least not to use, because even though it's wind, it is physical wind damage, but it's, it's an AoE wind damage, which means you're really not going to hit that hard. And you may potentially actually hit harder. It most likely will hit harder. Uh, with like a, an Aurora Blow or something like that. Because especially if you put it here on the 20% spot, an Aurora Blow, if, if you have it at a 4 star, um, you're, you're probably going to be actually hitting more damage or pretty close, um, especially with the wind potency. So that's something you kind of have to play around with a little bit, but it might be the way to go because this is, it does cost 4 versus the Aurora Blow cost 3, so you kind of have to figure the math out. But this is another really solid weapon, uh, pure physical attack boost. Uh, and then you got the uh, boost wind potency doesn't get as high physical attack It's about the same status as most of the other um, Like banner wind physical weapons we've had so far But it's another good weapon and if you don't have it in main hand It might be something you want to look towards putting in your in your sub weapon slot because even if you only get to level one Right, which would be half here because um, it rounds down that six percent adds up, right? so you, you want to consider that thing and 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 just, you know, get the most wind potency you can across your board. Now, this is one of the weapons I totally forgot existed. <laughs> and when I realized I had it at, like, OB3, I was like, wait. I was like, wait a minute. What's this gun? What does this gun do? Because I just don't, I don't use it. I don't use AOE stuff, right? 
and especially on Lucia. And I don't use magic AOE stuff on Lucia. So when I busted this, when I saw this gun, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This thing, this thing rocks, dude. So this thing is a great, great sub weapon. I don't recommend this for the main slot. Again, main reason is because it only has physical attack boost to 10%, and then you got the sigil boost. You don't need any of, or you don't need any of these, for for the event. So it's probably not something I would go for. But the the extra added ability here, the physical attack, the boost attack, wind potency, really, really nice for this event. It's perfect for it. Um, it wouldn't again. It may not be terrible in the in the main hand, but you're gonna you're gonna probably lack here. So again, you're gonna have to kind of figure out. You're gonna have to do the math, figure out what your wind potency is at, and and figure that out from there because you might want to put something like uh, like bald eagle in your main spot, right? That's probably the optimal one to put in the main spot for high physical attack. You also have two um, two physical attack or you have two uh, attack physical attack boost uh, spots there as well. So you kind of want to focus on those. So this would probably be good in a secondary slot or as a sub position for someone else. But it's a really overlooked weapon for this case because I even like I said, I forgot about it. And it's a, it's a weird weapon considering the fact that it has magic, but its physical attack is higher than its magic. But again, because of that, it actually ends up being really nice. Uh, another The next weapon is the Magic Shuriken. Magic Shuriken is basically the same exact thing as the Lucia weapon we just looked at. So you, you might have this new, but this one isn't bad in the main slot because take a look at it. If you, if you don't want to use the wind, uh, wind ninjutsu here, um, because again, it's an AOE move, so it's not going to hit as hard. But if you have a good Aurora, Aurora Blow, 20% physical damage boost there, so that's really nice. So this would be one if you don't have this. So, so say some crazy reason you have Yuffie, but you didn't pull on her banner. You're not going to pull on her banner. Um, and you want to use her or you have this somehow at really high for just any reason because you're a new player this wouldn't be a bad one to throw in the main slot if you're going to be using yuffie this would actually be an optimal one to throw in there probably compared to anything else she has and then if you tie that in with something where she has uh, especially if you pulled on her previous banner and you can do an attack boost that's really really useful for that because then you can use aurora blow and boost somebody else with uh with an attack boost for an extended extension on the buff and then bam you got more, more damage than ever and then the last but not least weapon, uh, if you don't just kind of, I think it's one that kind of gets forgotten a lot, sort of, except for like very specific cases, is this guy here, Dark Heavens. So kind of a, kind of a solid one here as well, boost physical attack. It's a single strike weapon, so if you have this at really strong, this would be great to bring Sephiroth into the fight, especially if you have Sephiroth's, um, if you have his uh, wind gear that previously came out. Um, I have it, but I don't have this weapon at very, I don't have, this weapon's not very strong for me. Unfortunately, I only have OB zero <laughs> for this one but it is a nice one it's it's probably one of the only ones one of the only two in this group um that i would say hey that's when you get that attack that's the one you're going to want to use right um because it does have wind up here up front it doesn't get super high in the physical tax area or the wind potency but it is a good weapon and then as well uh you get the support material options but because it's wind you're just going to use the gale strike anyway you don't need to go ahead and use any of these so just max out uh, whatever you can with your stat sticks um, and then the last weapon, uh, there's two other weapons I would say that are pretty useful, uh, but but one probably more so than than I would normally think, right? Normally I would say, hey, this weapon's not that good, but things have, but because of the way this event works, I've actually found some use for this weapon, and it kind of blows my mind because I never thought I would use it. It is glare raid, so the reason why this one is so big is because of the way this event works right so normally i'd be like boy boost limit breaks potency is not good right and it generally is it's not it's it's not good right but but here's the thing right these aren't so good so this is going to want to be a sub weapon slot um but it's the boost limit break potency on this one plus the added bonus of the boost physical attack that makes it good so you're probably thinking time row you're crazy dude this is stupid i know it is it's stupid but here's why so number one, this weapon has really high physical attack. Just, just it's stat wise, it's physical attack is like a good, like 10% plus above its magic attack. So just naturally it has really high physical attack. So it's kind of interesting. So that you, it has that going for it. It's got the physical attack boost going for it, but here's where the limit break boost is important. So having that for this fight does a ton. The main reason it's a very, it's a very, very, very short fight. So if you're doing things on auto or even manual, you're going to have like, you're literally going to come down to the wire to use a summon or a limit break. 
because limit breaks now you can get them up to uh, three thousand percent level ten. You're gonna have to have. I did the math. It's one point thirty two or a or a thirty two percent elemental boost to make uh, a summon more valuable damage wise to use over a, your limit break at level ten. So this thing. When it comes in here, if you don't have any elements, if you don't have lightning, ice, or fire, the limit break potency in here is actually going to be very, very useful. So even if you have this only at, say, level 2, that's a 15% boost, boost, uh, fifteen boost to your limit break. And the reason why this is important is because once you break his chocolate bar, his... Um, that just sounds funny saying that. Once you break his chocolate bar, poor guy. He's going to be mad. Um, his He's going to get a, a defense down and a magic defense down. And so when you hit the, when you hit with your limit, that's going to do a ton of damage. So think about this. If your limit's already doing, let's just say 50,000 damage, right? Let's just throw an arbitrary number out there. And you have 15% added on to that, you're going to add another 7,500 damage. That's pretty big. So depending on how high you get this or you have this at, you, that limit break could do some nutty damage. And it's right at the end of the fight. And the cool thing with limit breaks is limit breaks have this weird ability where they can like, you can use them when the game won't allow you to use abilities or any of your like materia or whatever at the at the last second whereas limit breaks you can so if you have to go down to that last second to use it there's a ton of extra damage you can just pump out right at the end so glare aid last one i'd say i recommend for this thing it's kind of a it's kind of a one that people just don't think about right because so far there's really no big damage but you want to focus on wind and honestly like i said the limit break boosting there is pretty good um i mean there are some other limit break boosting weapons um, but they're just, they don't, they don't have that physical power that, uh, that anybody else has, right? So if we look at Butterfly, uh, Butterfly Edge, there's no physical attack there, right? If we look at, I mean, do we even really want to, do we even really want to look at Striking Staff? Not really, because again, Striking Staff, it's okay, but it doesn't hit as hard. It doesn't have the same attack power that Glare Raid does. So again, it's not, it doesn't hit quite as hard there. This is physical defense boost for Rubber Collar. Doesn't hit as well. Right, so nobody has that Glarade option. Um, like, I guess you have this one, right? It's still not as high though, right? So the damage damage is pretty good. So if you have Twin Viper, most people probably don't have this very high though because Yuffie hasn't been out long. Um, but so yeah, this would be pretty good as well as a good substitute if you do happen to have it high. But Glarade is is a really nice uh, weird one that normally you wouldn't think about using, but it's, it actually finds use in this in this event so anyway guys thank you for watching the video i appreciate it hit the uh, su subscribe i'm used to hitting saying follow hit the subscribe button and uh, like the video and then leave your comments down below thanks for watching keep walking i'll catch you next time peace